I want to show you two of my favorite self massage tools and how to use them. Number one, you see it all the time, basic rolling pin. This is a $5 wooden rolling pin from Walmart. Uh, you could use wood, you could use metal, you could use marble, just about anything will work. And even if, if I didn't have a rolling pin, but I still wanted to get some of the benefit, instead of exposing the skin, if I just have a smooth surface, I could just roll. I've had patients fill up a plastic two liter pop bottle, squeeze it to let some space out and then freeze it. I've had them use um, a water and rubbing alcohol solution in there so it doesn't freeze solid, but it stays extremely cold. But we're gonna go with a rolling pin. Since we've got it, it's basic, it's cheap. Um, typically what we're dealing with, we're dealing with a, a sore, painful, uncomfortable knee. This could be two, three days post-op. This could be two, three months where it's just aching. You're out on your feet longer than usual. It's aching now, it's uncomfortable. What do you do? So typically what I advise, I like the couch. Um, I'm gonna slip my shoe off real quick. And what I would do is I would turn sideways. So the armrest of the couch is basically gonna be my backrest. I'm gonna bring this over. All right, hopefully that light doesn't blind you. So I'm leaning against the couch. I've got my surgical leg up on the side of the couch. And now I'm gonna use, so I'm gonna use my rolling pin. So if it's pretty acute, if you just had surgery, if there's lots of swelling, if there's some circulatory issues or concerns going on, what we do is we try to start high in the hip and we apply pressure back toward the heart, back into the system. So I might go maybe four or five inches below the hip, crease, and I'm working my way up. I can go on the outside, I can go on the top, I can go on the inside. Once I've done a couple swipes down in this area, I'll go a little bit lower. Depending on what your incision is like, if you have staples, you don't have to go over the staples. If you have a vacuum pump on there, you don't have to go over that. You can avoid the incision if it's still covered with the dressing, the bandaging. Um, but if it's not, you can go right on the incision. And basically what you're looking for is you're looking for any tender spots, anything that's noticeably uncomfortable. Sometimes what you'll find is you'll find an area in here and it might be a little bumpy. It, it might hurt, it might not, but that bumpiness is basically um, thickness in the connective tissue. And so what I usually explain is Maybe you were 12 years old, you were riding your bike, you fell off your bike, you hit your thigh, you got a con contusion in there, it scarred over, never bothered you for your entire life. You had no idea it was even there. But now, we're rehabbing the knee and all of a sudden you're like, oh, what is this bump? What is this stuff? If you start to apply pressure and kind of focus some energy and time and, and work through that, most likely you're going to be able to at least soften it. I'm not gonna claim that you're gonna break up scar tissue and you're gonna do a lot of other stuff that we used to say, but you're gonna soften hard non-compliant tissue and potentially improve the mobility of that tissue. And that's what the rolling pin is all about. The other benefit to the rolling pin is that it's pushing the fluid, it's creating a vacuum effect. Normally when you're walking, you're probably a super active person before the surgery, before the knee pain, you're walking a lot, every step you take, these muscles are contracting. And when they contract, they squeeze the blood vessels, they squeeze the lymph vessels, the veins, which pushes the fluid out of the lymph. When you're walking less than you had, when you're walking differently because of the lymph, post-op, things like that, you just don't get that kind of muscle contraction. The fluid isn't getting out of the limb as well as it used to. So this gives us a little mechanical advantage to get that fluid back up and allow the kidneys and the rest of the body to kind of clean it up. Um, the other part that the rolling pin or any kind of massage does is it desensitizes the tissue. You had a tourniquet, most likely around the upper thigh. They obviously cut the knee open. There's two incisions, the superficial and the deep, most likely. Um, all of this trauma, they retracted the skin, lots of stuff that was going on in there. So you, your body and your brain and your nervous system is sensitized 
to what that might feel like. And so we want to turn the sensitivity down a little bit because the protection of the pain is over. We don't need to be protected any longer. The, the function of pain is done, but our body is still kind of in that protective mode. So this helps to desensitize. And then the final thing is where back in the day you used to stretch your muscles and I always kind of explain if I take a rope and I tie a knot in the middle of the rope and I pull the ends of the rope, the knot doesn't go away, right? I have to go to the knot and untie the knot where it is. And this basically does the same thing. So as I'm massaging, I'm finding these bumpy areas, these sensitive areas. I don't have to do it with my leg up. I can do it with my leg down. I'm just sitting here. Um, and so as I find those sensitive areas and I rub them, the immediate pain response kicks in and says, hey, wait, wait, wake up, something's going on, I don't like what's happening, I'm afraid I'm gonna damage something, and you get this big pain response. But then if you continue to rub it and kind of work it, the pain levels go from, you know, a nine alarm to a seven alarm to a two alarm until there's no alarm, and you can just rub the tissue and you don't really feel hardly anything. Perfect, that's exactly what we're looking for. That's a perfect scenario in which the pain didn't serve a purpose. You know, all pain is real. All pain should serve a purpose. The purpose is to protect you, the person. If you didn't have pain, you couldn't survive. But the idea is that sometimes that pain signal is, it's like an alarm that's going off when there is no threat of theft. We just we need to turn that alarm down when it's not necessary. That's what the rolling pin does. I do, so what I usually do back here, right? I get my clients and we'll do a minute or two above the thigh all the way around. And then depending on their mobility, their back and, and hip mobility, I'll usually have them start to do the calf. Same thing, they're working up toward the knee this time because I've created this vacuum in the upper leg. Now I'm bringing the fluid up so that I can kind of go through the body I'll work on the outside of the lower leg. There's no benefit to the inside of the lower leg. That's just your shin bone. It's not comfortable. You're not gonna get any benefit. If you can't do it with the leg up on the couch, you can have the foot on the floor. Let me see if I can get you guys a better view. And so with my foot on the floor, I just lean over and I'm rolling up. And so you can imagine here, okay, what, what else is the benefit of this? Not only am I working the soft tissue, I'm also working my shoulders, I'm also working my back, my hip, my hamstring and my glute. It's like doing little mini hip bridges or back extensions. I'm working my whole body. Sometimes I'll give my clients with a shoulder problem, rolling pin on the calf because they're so focused on feeling the calf muscle they forget that their shoulder hurts and they're able to strengthen the shoulder without pain. In this case, we're working the calf because that's gonna be a major shock absorber for you as you get back to normal walking. So a variation on the rolling pin is this. You guys probably saw me the other day. I picked this up at the hardware store. It's just a wheel. It's a caster from you know what you would see in an office chair. The kind that I usually like has a flat top, not this knob. Um, and I don't care if it, if it has ball bearings or not because I don't really use them, I don't like them. But in this case, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the, the caster on the side so the wheel can spin, but I don't have to um, mess with anything else. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. Now this is a great little tool for getting into those little areas. A couple of you will experience some IT band issues, some lateral knee pain issues. The rolling pin is kind of hard and cumbersome. It's hard to get to on the side. So I get a little wheel like this. I think I paid $4 for it. And I just work through that tissue on the side. You know, I can go parallel with, with the fibers. I can work perpendicular, which isn't usually as comfortable with the fibers. Um, and then the idea is in terms of, well, how does that work with range of motion? Let me change my angle one more time here. So if I'm working my knee, let's say my knee flexion, I wanna get a little more bend in my knee. What do I do? So I bend my knee to end range, 
whatever end available range is. And then while it's there, I can kind of work through and massage some of the inside of the thigh, the outside of the thigh, all through the top of the quad. Usually that's gonna create kind of a relaxation because the main thing that's gonna prevent from a muscle standpoint, when you're trying to bend and the knee hurts, this muscle is gonna kick in because what this muscle does is it kicks the leg straight. So I need this guy to relax. And the easiest way to do it is just massage it, love it, care for it, make it feel good, right? Any way you have to do that. Um, so I'll massage it a little bit, I'll get a little more bend, I'll massage it a little bit more, I might get a little more bend, and I just kind of keep working. I could be, there's a TV behind this camera, I could be watching my favorite shows, and I just kind of come in through here. I can work down again, like the inside of my calf, I can work the outside. Sometimes people will get kind of that uh, swelling will give them difficulty lifting their foot. We call it foot drop. And some of those nerves on the outside of the leg will be compromised. Another really common report is numbness. I guarantee people watching this are gonna say, yes, that's me. I've got numbness on the inside of my knee or I've got numbness on the outside of my knee. That's associated with the surgical procedure itself damage to the superficial and deeper nerves. But one of the best ways to kind of overcome that sensation is with stimulation. And a rolling kind of self-massage like this is one of the best ways to do it. So I'm gonna wrap this up now because I hear my boys coming in the house. But if you have any questions or any advice, just holler at me, let me know what I can do for you. I'm happy to keep making these videos. I'll talk to you guys.